Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to our What's Up Wednesday webinar, all free for the finding, digging up family history for free on the internet. My name is Courtney Brown and I'm the Southeast Regional Coordinator from the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I'll be your host and question moderator today. Our presenter this morning is Angela Porter, Genealogy Librarian at the Indiana State Library. Just a couple of announcements. To register for other webinars or other trainings available from the Professional Development Office, please see the Indiana State Library's events calendar, which can be found on our website at www.in.gov library. For a full list of our current in-person in training menu, please see our continuing education website. This session is about an hour, so you'll receive one LEU for this presentation. If you're watching an archived recording of this webinar, instructions on how to obtain your LEU are in the video's description on YouTube. Or you can also find those instructions on the ISL's continuing education site under LEU policies. So without further ado, I will turn the presentation over to Angela. Okay, good morning, everyone. Everyone can hear me okay? Just let Courtney know in the chat. Okay, well, we're going to spend about 45 minutes going through some materials and then we will have some questions later on. Um, also along the way on our journey, I'm gonna ask for volunteers to share um, names that I can show you how the resources will work that I'm sharing. Um, Courtney will take um, the names in the chat and let me know. So we're gonna get started here. My name is Angela Porter. I've been doing genealogy for about 20 plus years. I am not a professional genealogist. However, I am a professional librarian and I love here, uh, sharing sources with everyone um, about how to, you can do genealogy for free from wherever you are with a computer. So let's go. So this is all free for the finding, digging up family history for free on the internet. And these are some grave robbers we see here. Okay, now this says, look at our folders. You do not have folders because we're doing this virtually, but you should have a handout that talks about all the different uh, sites we're gonna look at today. It's color coded for um, your use um, for, to make it easy. And so that will be what was in your folders. Okay, what you want to know from this presentation is everything on the internet? No, no it's not. Is everything that you find on the internet free? No, it's not. Sometimes when you're looking for something, you're going to need to go local. We'll talk about that more later. And then we're gonna talk about the magic of Google. Um, and of course you want to ask Google for exactly what you want, why not? And then five, even though the resources are available electronically, your patrons and yourself, you will still have to do the work. So first we're gonna start with some general resources. And how many of you are familiar with Cindy's list? So Cindy's list, um, and I will take you there right now. Cindy's list is for everything that you might need to know or your patron might need to know about genealogy. So my first tip is, if you do not know where to go for the question your patron is asking you or the question you have, go to Cindy's list. That would be the one place that you can go. And if you don't find the answer there, I'm gonna be surprised if the answer is out there anywhere. Okay, next we have Family Search. Now, of course, Family Search is a free website and you do need to register to make an account. So up here, if you already do not have an account, you'll need to create one. Now, family history functions very much like Ancestry, except it's free. 
Also, if you use um, Family Search in our library at the Indiana State Library, we're an affiliate library. So that would mean you or your patrons, you're going to have more resources than you would have available if you were using it at home. They used to send out the microfilm um, to the affiliate libraries, but they no longer do that. So they just make more digital resources available. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some web archives. And I'm going to go through some of these, just pointing them out, um, because if you're working in libraries, you probably already know about these. Um, I am going to stop on one of them and, and go into a little more depth. But of course, you have Hoffie Trust, which is a great place to find re free resources for genealogy works, family histories, um, county histories, um, and other resources. Internet Archive, of course, works very much the same way. So you're probably familiar with both of those resources. However, one you may not be familiar with is the online books page. And I love this, this site. Whoops, let's go back, sorry about that. Okay, so it's not very pretty, but that's okay. So what you wanna do, is you wanna search your listings. And for example here, I'm going to put in William and Mary. Now, William and Mary is a periodical that's good for um, research and, um, well, I should spell it right this morning, first of all, is good for if you're doing Virginia genealogy. Um, it's the William Mary Quarterly, okay? And here we go. Here we got the William and Mary Quarterly down at the bottom. And if you click there, you can see all these different years that are available for free. So if you find a source that refers you to William and Mary Quarterly for Virginia Ancestors, know that you can find it free on the online books page. Another thing, that is good with the India or the online books page is if I put in, for example, Indiana history. And we search that. So as you can see, we come up with a bunch of Indiana history books. And so as you go down, so we have some general resources. And as you can go down, you can start seeing your county histories. And these are very helpful when you're doing family histories um, because many times the county histories would um, feature pioneers from the area. So now we will go on to national records. Um, once again, the National Archives, I believe if you work in libraries or you know, you're a librarian, you're very familiar with these things. So I'm going to go ahead to the next resource, and this is land records. Now this is put together, let's go to it. Okay, this is put together by the Bureau of Land Management. Now this is when, when you go to land patents here at the top, this was when the federal government was selling land to pioneers. So when you're doing a search, of course, you're going to, first of all, let's, let's just say everybody's from Indiana this morning. I don't know if you are or not, but we're going to say Indiana. So you need to collect to select your state. Now you can do your county, but many times I leave it very broad. And then you're going to want to put in your last and first name. So for example, we're going to do Swank. And we're going to do Daniel Swank. And then I'm going to search the patents. And I know that this is my ancestor in Allen County. So over here, you can see the counties. And if you click on it, it gives you more information. So it shows you where it's at in the world. But the best thing about this site, if you go back up the top, 
you do a patent image. And as soon as the government gets with us, I'll show you. You can see the actual patent. And then of course you can print that out. If you wanna buy a copy from the government, you can. All right. And so another interesting thing is we're going to look at the soldiers and sailors database. Now this is by the National Park Services. And you would think, well, that's kind of odd that they have the soldiers and sailors database. And I think it's kind of odd too, but that's, you know what, that's okay. So as you can see, they divide it between soldiers and sailors. And at this point, if we can do it quickly, um, does anyone have an ancestor they want to look for? Um, let's just say for uh, ease from Indiana that might have been in the Civil War. Anybody have a name that they want to try? It looks like we have one. Uh, Braden okay. is the last name, first name. Okay. And the first name? Jordan. Okay. Jordan with an O at the end. O N or E N A N A N. Okay. And you said Braden. Mm -hmm. B R A D E N. Okay. So we're going to go and then we get some choices here. And over here, you can pick your state. So are any of these a match? Is this Jordan up here? It is. She said he okay. was in the 110th regiment. Okay, well, there we go. But as you can see, if that did not come up with your result, you can go over here and pick the state. If you know where they were serving and what type of soldier they were, you can go in and, and then the results that way. All right, well, excellent. What an excellent example. So now we're going to go to our Indiana resources. And of course, I have to tell you about the Indiana State Library, but there's so much to share about the Indiana State Library, I'm going to have to pull myself back. So I'm just going to show you the highlights. I would suggest go there, poke around, because you do not know what you're going to find. So here we have our digital collections. And as you can see, you can search by genealogy. Um, in the genealogy section, we do have Bible records. And these are all scanned images. All right. And then some other things that you want to be aware of is we have the Hoosier State Chronicles. You can see this right here. Also, if you wanna find our online resources, you go over to the left menu and click on online resources. Now, if you're using it at home, the ones at the top that say subscription, you can only use those at the library. But scroll down and you can use everything under resources provided by the Indiana State Library underneath here. And here we also have the Hoosier State Chronicles. So I've showed you the digital um, archives that we have. Indiana memory is a very similar function, um, but it functions for all the counties and not just the Indiana State Library. So these are libraries all over the, the state that are contributing to Indiana memory that you can find digital images. Okay. And then let's see what else I want to show you. This I sometimes forget and I do not want to forget it. So I made a note. What you want to do is when you come to our website, instead of online resources, actually click collections and services. When you do that, you're going to want to go to genealogy collections. And when you click down, click it, and then you scroll down, go to the Indiana County Research Guides. And we're just going to pick this one. Let's see here. We will pick, it doesn't really matter, but let's pick Monroe County. So as you see at the top, these are resources we have in the library for you to use, but scroll down. So remember when you're using the Indiana State Library, scroll down is, is what you need to know. 
we have down here online resources. So remember, when you go to the genealogy section of services, you want to go to the county guides and then scroll down and we've got a bunch of links for the counties there. Okay. And we talked about Indiana memory already. All right, now we're going to talk about the Indiana State Archives. And this is a separate entity from the public or the Indiana State Library. And most of the time you're gonna to wanna to use these research databases with the Research Indiana indexes. And as you can see, you can do a name search up here or you can go in by the categories. So let's do, for example, let's just stick with our Daniel Swank here. And I use Daniel Swank as my example because it's kind of a different name. And so that kind of limits my results for good examples. So let's search. And when we search this, I know he's from Fort Wayne. So um, we see that we have land office and military here. So if we go into, for example, if I went into military for Civil War, I know that this is the person I'm interested in, but I have two choices there for soldiers that served. And if I go into land office, I know Fort Wayne, I know that I was from Allen County, so that's good. And so now I can look in here and I can see where the person purchased the land from the Indiana land office. They purchased from Montgomery, Ohio, and it was in 1835. So while the soldier was Daniel Swank Jr., this is Daniel Swank Sr. that purchased the land. All right, and speaking of Allen County, probably many of you are familiar, or at least you should be familiar, if you're not, with the genealogical uh, center there, the genealogy center. Now, I would suggest going and using their resources in person. However, um, they do have these starting menus here, these starting buttons. The African American Gateway, I believe I have mentioned later on in the presentation. So we will go ahead and go into that later. Percy is a periodical index for genealogy. So I would suggest checking that out. And then if you find that for the William and Mary Quarterly, you found an ancestor, then you know where you can go get some free periodicals. So if you go to our resources here, Oh, look, yeah, since this is all about free, we're gonna to wanna to go to free databases. And as you can see, we've got our gateways coming up again. We've got Allen County resources. We've got family Bible records, um, family resources, Indiana resources. So let's go up to Allen County. And then we're gonna to go to the military records. And we're going to go to the 20th century. And of course, I'm going to use Swank again because that's a nice one to limit my results. I was used to putting in Daniel, so I need to put in Richard this time. And so if we click here, we can see we've got Richard Swank, and this is an index to their newspapers. And we can tell, yep. World War II, that checks out. And then let's see here, CF. So a citation. And let's see here. And family information was, con was contained into this um, newspaper article or snippet from the Journal Gazette. All right, so once again, going in through more local resources, 
Um, let's go to, did I skip one? I did, sorry about that. We are going to go to the Monroe County History Center. And does anybody have a ancestor that is from Monroe County? Anybody? Does anybody have a name they want to share? I'm not seeing anything in the okay. chat box come up. All right. Okay, it looks like their site's being a little slow here. Oh, I got one. Okay. William Henry Cowden. Okay. Let's go as soon as I can get their website to work with me here. <laughs> Come on. I see what's going on here. Okay. Sorry about that. So when you go to Monroe County History Center, when you go to library, you'll want to go down to indexes and resources. And down here in indexes and resources, we have African-American surname index. We have a birth index. We have a church index, which is sorted by church and surname. We have court records, death records, a divorce index. Um, all sorts of wonderful marriage records, land records. If you're from Monroe County, hit this hard. So we did have a name. And what name was that? William Henry Cowden, C-O-W-D-E-N. Okay. And what index did they want to try to find him in? Where would you like to search, Laura? Uh, she says anywhere birth or death birth or death okay so let's try the death index then and calden with a c is that correct yes c-o-w-d-e-n okay so we're going to scroll down here c-o and was that w yes c-o-w-d-e-n Okay, I see lots, okay. And mm -hmm. that first name again? William Henry. Okay, so we gotta go down a little bit more. William Henry, is that him? Died March 13th, 1950? Yep, that's him. Okay, so once again, if you have Monroe County History or uh, family members, definitely try out the Monroe County History Center. All right, let's keep going here. Okay, I'm gonna ask now again, anyone from Bartholomew County? Now this is interesting. We don't have a lot of these that I've seen yet, but sometimes your local government will really open up archives to you. Anybody from Bartholomew County? I'm not seeing anything in the chat come up. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're just going to use, and this is an Allen County, so I'm just going to use the good old John Smith. Okay, so John Smith, as you can see, tons of records here, cemetery records, court records, um, for the circuit, the civil, the common pleas. Um, and this is wonderful. Um, not all of our counties are opening up their archives like this, um, but I do hope more of them follow suit of Bartholomew County. So we'll go ahead and move along since no one is from Bartholomew County or at least claiming to be. All right, do we have anybody from Delaware County? This one is called What Middletown Red? And if you are a lucky person, you might be able to find out what your ancestor read, which is a fun little thing for genealogy. Anybody from Delaware have, County with a name? 
Yeah, I have a name, Hannah Heritage. Hannah, and is that H-E-R-T? H-E-R-I-T. I-T. A-G-E. Okay, is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, and find records. Oh, oh, no. Let's try just, and is Heritage the last name? Yes, I am assuming okay. yes. I'm assuming too. So. Let's see if we got any. Oh, oh, we've got some people with heritage. So we've got patrons here. Okay, I don't see that as the last name though. But for example, even though we didn't find a hit here, here we have the patrons and we can see when they join the library and we can click on their name and we can find out all sorts of information about them because they had to fill out to get a library card. And then we can do their transaction history and we can see what they checked out. So if you're from Delaware County and you wanna add a little spice to your family history, I would suggest trying out what Middletown read. Okay, let's see another great resource is the Indiana Magazine of History. And with this one, what I wanna show you is for example, if I just put in marriage up here and search it, and I scroll down, come on, there we go. They have Wayne County marriage records. They have Clay County marriage records, Orange County. So there are some resources here um, in the Indiana Magazine of History that you may not know exist. So I would try doing some name searches, county searches, um, you can do marriage and see if there are any marriage records for the county you are searching. This is another great thing. So I've already talked about county histories and how they sometimes have information about the pioneers from that area, particularly from, oh, let's say the late 1800s to the beginning of the 1900s. So this is the every name index. So you from home, you can search county um, indexes to find the names for the county um, histories. So if we go here, and some of these look a little different, but this one I'm gonna do Henry County, this is what it usually looks like. As you can see, this is from 1884. And we're gonna go here to our alphabetical index. We're gonna click on P and we're gonna scroll down to the name Porter. And there we go. And so they tell you what page numbers you can find information about that particular person and the county history. And this is a county history of Henry County. And then the full title is together with sketches of its cities, villages, towns, educational, et cetera, et cetera, 1884. And then you would try to find a free county history of that county history through the different resources we already talked about, internet archives, um, Hothi, the online um, book page. And then if you found the uh, county history online, you would be all set just doing it from home. Okay. So before I talked about Bartholomew County and I talked about how some of the different counties are starting to sh share more of their archives and Chester County, Pennsylvania is an excellent place to show this. So we have got the property atlas, we've got indexes, we've got the archives. So let's see here. All right, let's go into 
Let's do this one. All right. And let's go into wills and administrations. And then we've got the index here. And this runs from 1714 to 1923. And then you have your will abstracts down here starting in the 1800s. So ideally you could use your index here and match it up with the abstracts down below. So as you can see, this Chester County, I, I just don't, if you have people from Chester County, Pennsylvania, once again, check this out because their site is impressive as far as what they've made available to the public. Okay, we're gonna talk about the magical Google. And if you are a librarian, um, or if you work with genealogy patrons, or if you're just interested in genealogy, um, and if you're a person who's just alive, you probably know about Google. Um, what I always like to say is, ask for exactly what you want, because what's gonna, what's the worst thing that can happen? Not get what you want, that's fine. So what I wanna show an example of this, how this works. Okay. Oh, I know. <sighs> Sorry about that, everyone. So what you wanna do, is you want to do New Jersey colonial records. Oh, this is not working. There we go. All right, for example, I must ask exactly what I want. I want colonial. Whoa. New Jersey. records. Okay, and of course we come up with family search, which you've already talked about. But then we want to go down here. Okay, so as you can see, we can see early land records. And we've got early land records from 1650s to the 1900s. You can search down here. Does anybody have a name they wanna try? Anybody from New Jersey? Okay, we'll go ahead and try this one then. Oh, so we have a name, John Tyndall. Oh. John Tyndall. Okay. T I N D A L L. A L L. And John? Uh huh, with an H, J O H N. Okay. All right. We'll just hit search. All right. We've got John Tyndall from 1771 and also John Tyndall from 1768. Do any of those look familiar? Well, we'll go to the top one here. And as we can see, even though we're gonna have to go and get into either contacting the county clerk or accessing this folio, we've got some pretty deep information about who the, the land from John Kendall went, or Tendall went to. We've got a date. Um, so once again, just ask Google exactly what you want because you don't know what you might find. Okay, and let's see here with that. I'm gonna see if there's some things I wanna skip ahead because it looks like we've got about 11 minutes or so. So I am going to skip ahead here.
All right. So we're going to talk about newspapers. And we've already talked about the Hoosier Chronicle, but this is Chronicling America. And so this is a newspaper database, but it's for all the states. Um, and so what you would do is let's say, we'll do Ohio and why not? Let's just put in Swank cause that's a good one. And then as you can see, it pulls up the images of the paper and it tells us the date and the areas. So then it, once you've done that, you can look and see if you find your ancestor. You can also limit your dates. I'm going with a pretty broad range here. But if you weren't familiar with Chronicle in America and you have other people outside of Indiana, Besides the Hoosier State Chronicles, of course, use that if you're in Indiana. If not, use Chronicle in America for outside Indiana. There's also the Google Newspaper Archive uh, and Sunster Hunt. Okay, this is one you may not know about. And what Ancestor Hunt does, and they've been adding different things. So if you visit, go up here and check some of the other resources. But here with newspaper links, you scroll down and go by the state. So let's do Ohio online newspaper summary. This is being very slow. So as you can see, Chronicle in America, and then we see statewide collections by the different cities. And if you scroll down, um, there's some available through the Ohio memory. And then Google News Archive. Um, and then some various independents like the Union Township Public Library. There's a link for them. Um, they also have small presses, um, independent presses. So um, another newspaper source to keep in mind is Ancestor Hunt. Okay, let's talk about some African-American resources. And from genealogy, uh, from Indiana, the Robert Settlement genealogy um, is very impressive. So this is all about the Robert Settlement that was in Indiana. And if you go up here to genealogy, they've actually added at first, they just had a few names, but they keep adding more and more names. So if your family lived in the Roberts Settlement, then here's their genealogy. They also have their cemetery listings. So that's one for Indiana. And I talked about the um, genealogy um, centers, the Allen County Genealogical Center's African American Gateway. And as you can see, um, once again, this is one of the chunky resources you should use if you have African American genealogy. So they've got it to US states. They have US regions, other countries, subjects. I mean, impressive. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna talk about, and when slavery was over, um, of course, the families had been split up. Many families had been split up through slavery. So there was a time of trying to put back their families together and how some African-Americans did that was by putting ads in newspapers, 
looking for their family. Um, so does anybody have a name they wanna try? I am okay. not, oh, okay. No, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, we'll try John Smith and see what we get. So here we have one where we have Pearl Smith searching for John Smith and his daughters. So the unfortunate thing about African-American genealogy is it can make records difficult to find. However, sometimes out of difficult things, we have a resource like this. And this is a difficult resource, but it also has a wealth of family information. And let's just hope that these families were successful in finding each other. All right. I consider the Fred Hart Williams Genealogical Society, the Cindy's list of African-American genealogy. Um, let's see. So anything that you may want to find about African-American genealogy, um, I would suggest going here. Um, as you can see, we've got their whole page of links, African American cemeteries online, the different genealogical um, societies, um, different websites, they've got Allen County on there. Um, so African American genealogists is another big chunky resource for you to go to. All right. And we will go forward to, this is another one of my favorite free resources. Well, let me go back to it. Um, of course, there were African-American slaves, but there were also African-American free people um, at the time called free people of color. Um, this site puts together information for free African-Americans of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Maryland, and Delaware. Um, let's just go ahead and use this one. And this particular gentleman that put together the site actually wrote a book, but he's made the information available for free online. So let's, how it functions is you've got a range of different surnames. So I'm gonna show you this one. We're gonna go for denim right here. So we're gonna go into Davis through Drew, and then we have to scroll down. To get to Denim, and we'll get there. So it's a little bit clunky, but it's free. Okay. So here's the Denim Denim Ham family. And this is my family. Um, and I am related to um, Hardened Denim. And so we can see here how they suppose that the lineage worked. And we should see, pardon, there we go. This is my ancestor right here. So if you have free African-Americans in your family, I would suggest going to this site. So let's talk about some immigrants. And I'm gonna show you this one because they do, well, why did you do that? Okay, well this one on your website, 
or on your website, on your handouts. I'm not sure why this link isn't working. Let's see if I can find it this way. Okay, so we're gonna go to passenger search. So if you go to passenger search, and let me use this example here. Okay, so this is my ancestor here, William Daffron. Um, it's spelled a couple different ways. And we can see when he arrived, we can see what he, where he arrived from and what the ship's name was. Now, what they try to do is they try to make you pay for these things. As you can see, I'm clicking and not getting anywhere. But what I did is I just knew, since I knew the year and I knew the name, um, I just went and I confirmed that, yes, he came through Ellis Island. I had my information. I just used family search and ancestry, and I was able to find um, his, the passenger list where he was on it. So that's, I would suggest doing that. Um, and then also, like you can see, shows you what age they were. So there's um, junior and senior. So even if there's a paywall, you can sometimes use the resources available is my lesson here. Okay. And I'm gonna end with this one because this one is just really, really cool. We're not gonna get to the British resources here. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to use, oh, look at that. Okay. It was working when I checked it last week. Let's try. I want to see what I want to end on. I want to end on something good. Okay, let's end on, let's say you went all the way back to um, your ancestors and you knew they were London. So the London role is for apprentices for the different companies that would have been in London. So you have your um, guilds for these different companies you can see listed up here. And if I do a search here, And select all. I need to switch that around and put the last name in the right place. All right. So then we come up with a search here. And as I can see here, I have John Champney, um, which was later Cham Chamness. Um, we can see the date here, 1556. He was part of the Draper's Guild, and he was a free man, which means he was no longer an apprentice. So that is the end of my presentation since I am out of time, but I did have to skip over some resources because I always have more to share than I have time for. 
Um, and on that note, um, at the very end, I will have my contact information. I continually col uh, collect free resources. So if there's a particular area um, that you're interested in, let me know whether it's, you know, a particular geographical area you're interested in free resources. African American, I collect a lot of stuff for Quakers, um, Irish, English, etc. So the takeaway is, is everything on the internet? No, it's not. Sometimes you just get an index and you still need to go to the library or the archives to get that information. Is everything free? No, it is not. We saw that when we tried to go to Ellis Island and they tried to close us out with a paywall. However, we were still able to get some information. Um, what you need to do is remember to look for local resources. So we saw that there were libraries. Um, there were universities, we saw historical societies, genealogical societies sharing their information online. Ask Google for exactly what you want. I asked you for New Jersey colonial records and I found some land records I could dig into. Um, once you look at these resources, of course, you will still need to do the research and you will still need to dig for the information, but with the digital resources, it does make it easier. You can at least get started sometimes at home. And of course, sometimes you still need to go ahead and do your research. So there's not gonna be something for your patron or you where you can type it in your name and you can get your whole family history like happens on television. Um, and once again, which I've said before, is you still need to, to visit real places and use physical materials. So this is my information. And I also want to point out, make sure to use our Ask a Librarian. You can, you and your patrons can ask librarians for free help with your genealogy. It doesn't cost anything for this service. And that's all I have. Are there any questions? Thank you so much, Angie. This was wonderful. We have a lot of thank yous and thanks so much for the great information. If anybody has any questions for Angie, just go ahead and put those in the chat box. Um, someone was asking, are the British resources on the handout? They are. Everything is on your handout, even things that I did not get to um, talk about today because I just collect so much and I just get so excited about it. Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions. Well, we have a lot coming in. So, okay, mostly great, um, great information. So this was so great. I did send out the handout this morning. Um, if you did not get that um, email, I will be sending out the um, recording of this presentation along with that handout. If you're watching an archived recording of this presentation, information on how you can get your LEU are in the video's description on YouTube. And the handout along with the slides will be posted with the um, recording link on the archived webinar page um, on the Indiana State Library's website. Uh, Lisa, we can go ahead and stop the recording.